Welcome to the podcast filled with his love, strengthening attachment relationships. I'm Russ Osgathorpe, and I'm your host, and this is season two of the podcast. You might remember in season one, we talked about part three of my book, Filled with His Love, and all the topics, there are 22 of them, and those episodes are available for your uh, listening and watching if you'd like. Positive psychology, I think we would like to title this uh, season two, Positive Psychology and the Gospel. So you'll notice that we're going to have video and all audio both on this season. So today, if I were to title this episode, I would say, What Can Adam and Eve and Positive Psychology Teach Us About Love? Before we begin, I think it's important to remember this statement by President Russell M. Nelson. We embrace all truth, whether it comes from the scientific laboratory, we might say the psychologist's laboratory, or from the revealed word of the Lord. We accept all truth as being part of the gospel. One truth does not contradict another. Now, sometimes people ask me, who is this podcast for? Well, anyone who wants to strengthen a relationship with family, friends, or with God. And many of you may not be familiar with positive psychology. It hasn't been around really a long time. It's, it uh, gained a foothold in the field in about the late 90s. But I like on this word cloud, strengths, of course, that's what we try to do on this podcast. We try to strengthen relationships. But I like the word flourishing, too. I remember a time when the brother had asked me to speak to the missionary department about how we might improve missionary training. And I said, we, we want missionaries who flourish. We want to all flourish. We want to be like that plant that grows and flourishes. That's really the goal of positive psychology. Some might ask, too, well, how did I become so interested in relationships? And I have to go back to the first two great commandments, loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Because those are the greatest commandments, that captures my attention. How can we obey those greatest of all commandments? Because they lead to the obedience of all commandments. Now, it's another thing, though. Anytime I read a story, or if I watch something on television, or a movie, you'll notice that the core part of the story is centered around conflict. Usually conflict in relationships. Sometimes a conflict just within the person's own self. They are in conflict with themselves, but usually it's with relationships. And so I ask myself continually, well, why do relationships always have to be so full of conflict? Can't we have relationships that are joyful and life-giving? Now, this story is kind of, uh, it's a sad story, I have to warn you, but it's about a friend that I had, and um, he was having difficulty at work. He would kind of internalize every negative comment that came his way. If a supervisor gave him correction, he took that to mean that he was not worth very much, that he was not successful, and that he was falling short all the time. And the more he internalized those comments, the sadder he got, basically. He eventually began doing things that were just unacceptable in the workplace and lost his job. After he lost his job, he lost his wife uh, in divorce and became quite alone, moved out of state. And so I had lost track of him, and I asked a friend, whatever happened to so-and-so? And he said, well, it was like very soon after he moved out of state, he passed away of a very strange disease that we I can't remember what that disease was, but um, he passed away. But I would say, in large part, that disease, and we know that stress and um, our emotions cause so much difficulty with our physical health. I would say he died of love deprivation, of really not having enough close, tight relationships with those around him. Recently, I saw an article in Time Magazine, What Can Adam and Eve Teach Us About Love? The title caught my eye. Uh, and, but it's also about positive psychology, this article. 
And the author says that the first lesson that they teach us is the power of connectivity, how important it is. The very first thing the Lord said to Adam and Eve was, it is not good for man or woman to be alone. And it's really not good. My friend was alone. He got so despondent in this state of loneliness that he, it literally caused the, his death. Now, autonomy is the second lesson. If we look at Adam and Eve, Eve, with the help of the Lord, eventually made that decision to partake of the fruit on her own. And Adam, likewise, after counseling with Eve, he made his decision autonomously. But then they came to unity. Their, their minds came together in unity before they left the garden. They knew that as a couple, they had to give each other space to make their own decision, but they also had to come to agreement totally before they moved on. And that is how we are asked to make decisions ourselves. In couples or even sometimes in close friendships, we want to come to unity. The third lesson was the importance of co-narration. Now you might say, what is co-narration? Well, Narration is this story. It's kind of, in this case, the story of our life. And Adam and Eve co-narrated their life. They worked together in the fields. They had children together. They wrote their story. We all write our own story. We co-narrate the story of our lives, and we co-create, not just uh, in bringing children into the world, but we co-create our environment. We co-create our home. We co-create the nature of our relationship. Everything we do is in co-narration and co-creation. These are topics in positive psychology as well. Now, and my friend did not have that. He did not co-narrate and co-create. Um, he had difficulty with his decisions uh, with autonomy as well as coming to unity. And that's why his marriage eventually broke up. Um, but now when I think of my friend, I think, okay, he is going to receive redemption like all of us. All of us can be redeemed. All of us can be redeemed of our shortcomings, our faults, the difficulties we have in our lives. And it is redemption that is the saving force in the universe the Savior of the world. I love this verse in Moses. And in that day, the Holy Ghost fell upon Adam, which beareth record of the Father and the Son, saying, I am the only begotten of the Father from the beginning, henceforth and forever, that as thou hast fallen, thou mayest be redeemed, and all mankind, even as many as will. So we're all in a fallen state, and in that fallen state, the Lord comes to our rescue and redeems us like he is redeeming my friend who had so much difficulty in mortality. I know that the Redeemer lives. I know that he can save. I know that he can save us from all of the difficulties we face in life. So, this is the beginning of season two. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will be back again next week.